This video goes over rules for rounding and reviews some place value. So when you are rounding, the first thing you want to do is underline the digit that you're rounding to. Then you're going to look at the number to the right. If it's bigger than five, you're going to round up. If it's less than five, you're going to round down, which means that you keep the underlined digit the same. So whenever you're thinking about rounding, it's almost like you're thinking about a hill. So if I draw a number line here, zero to 10, anything that is on this side is rounding up. Anything that is on this side is staying the same. If I bend my number line in the middle, so my zero is at the bottom of the hill, um, and my 10, and then my five is in the middle, anything that's on this side, let's say a person, is going to end up rolling down the hill to the 10. If you are on this side, you would roll back down to the zero. So that's always what we're trying to decide. So first thing we're going to do is round each number to the indicated place. So 1,416 to the nearest 10. So that's the place, the digit that I'm going to underline, the one in the 10 spot. Then I'm going to look at the number to the right. Let's circle that in red. So that's a 6. 6 is bigger than 5. So that means that 1,416, my numbers in front stay the same. The one is going to round up to a two. And then the numbers after the one I rounded stay as a zero. So let's do another example. Now we're rounding to the nearest thousand. So I need to find the number in the thousands digit, which is the two. The number immediately to the right is a five. So our rules are five or greater. We're going to add one to the underlying number. And then everything after that changes to a zero. So 473,000. Uh, next one is 4.329 to the nearest tenth. So the first thing I need to do is underline the digit that is in the tenths spot, which is in the three. I'm going to look at the number immediately to the right, which is a two. Two is less than five. So I'm going to keep my underlined digit the same and change the after ones to a zero. Now with a decimal, you don't really have to uh, write these zeros, but you can if you want to. Example D, we're going to round 528 to the nearest 100. So I need to figure out which number is in the 100 spot, which is the 5. Looking at the digit immediately to the right, I've got a 2. That is less than 5. So 5 is going to stay the same, my underlined digit, and my numbers after the underlined digit are going to round to 0. Or I'm going to write as 0. Last example, uh, this number here to the nearest hundredth. So I need to identify my number that is in the hundredth spot, which is a 6. The number immediately to the right is a 4. That is less than 5. So that means my underlined digit is going to stay the same and you don't need to write the zeros after this one. The other thing that you should be able to do is identify numbers as greater than or less than. So what we're going to do here is fill in the correct symbol. So this one is less than. This one is greater than. And we're going to fill it in between each pair of numbers. So 4 is less than 4.25, 3 and 12 hundredths is greater than 3 and 2 hundredths, 7 hundredths is less than 70 hundredths, 90 and 37 hundredths is less than 90 and 78 hundredths, 3.25 or 3 and 25 hundredths is greater than 2 and 25 hundredths. And finally, uh, 3 and 245 thousandths is less than 3 and 246 thousandths.